Hey guys, so last year, I made a very bad financial decision. And the beginning of this year, I was not celebrating, you know, a very good new year. I was experiencing anxiety. I was experiencing panic attacks. I didn't want to go out. I didn't want to talk to people. I didn't want to face people. And here's the thing. I was still posting videos online and creating content online. But as soon as the camera goes off... I wasn't happy with my life. And it's due to the fact that I made one bad financial decision and it cost me around 2.7 million pesos. So I was in debt to a lot of people. I didn't know what to do. And for someone who has been in the money game for, I don't know, for more than a year, it was something scary for me. I didn't know what to do. And right now, even just looking back at that time, I still feel the fear, the pain, the hurt that I experienced back then. But nonetheless, I still thank God. I still thank the universe. I still thank life for allowing me to experience that because I have learned a lot of lessons. And in this video, I will share with you those lessons that I learned. So hey guys, my name is Alec Cuenca and I don't know how to actually do this video. I just feel that I needed to create this video so that a lot of young entrepreneurs out there and a lot of people who are starting to build their wealth also prepares themselves for the best and also for the worst things that may happen along the road. And essentially, I feel that there's two types of lessons that we can learn in life. First one is that we can learn from our own mistakes, which I do not recommend because it's really f***ing painful and you can learn from other people's experiences and of course other people's learnings and so in this video i'm going to talk about exactly the top 10 lessons that i learned from the moment that i got scammed and hopefully you guys learn a thing or two and you won't repeat my mistake and so i'm going to talk about the whole story in my next video but for now i'm going to focus on the lessons and I hope that you pick up a thing or two. So the first lesson that I want to share with you. So it's still hard for me to talk about this mainly because I'm, I don't know. I don't know how to, if I should share this. I don't know if I should even talk about this. But I do know that if I talk about this, it will, of course, you know, lessen the burden that I'm feeling. And at the same time, maybe inspire some of you to, you know, make better decisions moving forward. And so while it was this dark, scary time for me, I learned that most of the successful people really made also bad decisions in their lives, right? So, and I also came across this concept called the Dunning-Kruger effect. So the Dunning-Kruger effect, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but this effect mainly talks about how you initially rise even though you know few things or know nothing about a topic, which for me was finances, but I was really confident in making those kinds of decisions. And this effect will basically allow me to reach the peak of Mount Stupid. In the peak of Mount Stupid, you come to a point where you feel that you kind of know a lot of things. That, that's why you feel confident. But in reality, you only know so little. Okay. So after you reach the peak of Mount Stupid, you now get into the valley of despair, which is something that I experienced and something that I've been, thankfully, you know, something that I've been able to pull myself out of. And after you reach or hit your rock bottom, which is the valley of despair, you now slowly gain momentum into building building your path towards enlightenment and it will eventually lead you to incremental but sustainable growth. So that's basically the Dunning-Kruger effect. So with that, now we're here, we're becoming enlightened, we're learning from our mistakes, thank God, and we're also gaining insights from people who have done it before so that the mistakes that we made or I made, I won't make them again. So now looking back, I just remember that brutal experience for me also gave me a lot of insights that I feel if I share with you guys, you might, you know, get ahead if you stay away from my mistake and also learn and apply the lessons that I also learned in that experience. And it starts with number one, if it's too good to be true, it's a scam. One thing that I learned about money is that get rich schemes bring you quick money but quick money also brings quick problems quickly so if you feel that the money is too good to be true like if someone guarantees you okay maybe a profit of 15%, 20% and the word here is guarantees that that's the return you're gonna get it's probably a scam 
because now that I know better, like projections doesn't usually go more than 10% unless, you know, and if you think about it, like if an investment makes 20% in a month or 15% in a month and a lot of investments out there only gives out 6%, 7%, 8%, maybe 10%. Why isn't everyone investing in those kinds of investments, right? If that is so promising, then why aren't everyone investing in those kinds of investments? The answer is clear. It's because those investments are a scam. They are a scam, okay? So investing is a long game. If you want to get rich quickly, then investing is not for you, okay? You cannot play the game of investing and you want to have a short-term gain. Investing is not for you. Maybe that's gambling, okay? Go gamble, go play outside. But if you want to talk about investing, then it's always for the long term. If it promises you, if it guarantees you, if it says that it will give you good amount of of fortune in just three months, if it's too good to be true, then it's not true. Then it's probably not good for you as well. Okay, so that's the first lesson that I learned. I wish, I wish, I really wish that I have learned that from the beginning because instead of, you know, spending a year trying to find ways that I could invest more money in that kind of scheme, that kind of investment, I should have spent my money, I should have spent my time, my energy, and my resources into the right way because apparently in investing, there is a right way to do it. There is a process, okay? And it's, it's something that people have been using for since the beginning of time. I mean, even in the earliest man from Babylon, I think I have a book right here, The Richest Man in Babylon. It even talks about an ancient city where people use this kind of technique where people can actually generate generational wealth. And it also talks about not going into scams or get rich schemes because there's really no easy way or a quick way to earn money. The second lesson that I learned from that scam is that there are no shortcuts to financial success. Like literally, there's no shortcuts. Like if you wanna learn investing, you gotta take the baby steps. And for example, you're a baby, you can't really, you know, try to run as soon as you can. You gotta learn how to crawl, you gotta learn, take the baby steps, and you gotta learn how to walk before you can actually run. And that's the same with your finances. That's the same with my finances. You know, if I had learned that there is really a process and there's no shortcut to this, I might have started the process in an earlier point in my life. The reason why I got smacked in the face, the reason why I failed so bad is I thought I could outmaneuver the process. I thought that I'm much smarter than the process. I thought I'm much smarter than a lot of people out there that I that I can get money easily. And I was constantly looking for a shortcut. And that's the reason why I failed so bad. I kept on looking for shortcuts. You know, my ego was telling me, you gotta be rich now, you gotta be successful now. You know, and there's a shortcut to it, you just gotta find a way. But in the shortcuts, you know, most of the time, the shortcuts involve something that is either illegal, unethical, or maybe even life-threatening. So take a look at your shortcuts. Because the thing is, the people who are successful right now, they didn't do any shortcuts. They did the process. They did what they had to do. They started from step one, they proceeded with step two, step three, step four, step five, and then they kept on doing it. They kept on getting better. They trusted the process because the process is what will take you to your destination. There's no shortcut in life. So a lot of people are failing because they want shortcuts, okay? They're, they're too lazy. They're too unmotivated. They're too uninspired to do the work. So let's just face it. I was lazy at that time. I didn't want to work hard. I thought I could earn money so easily. And that cost me. There's no shortcuts to success. So right now, figure out the process, study the process. That's the thing about money. And that's the thing about success. If you want to be successful, you got to study success. If you want to be wealthy, then you got to study wealth. That's the thing. You don't need to create your own roadmap to it. Success leaves blueprint. Success leaves clues. Study the clues and apply them in your own life. Like people have been solving this problem of success, of wealth, getting rich ever since the beginning of time. And so what, what, what we need to do is to study it, study it and apply it in our lives. It's, it's such a simple thing that I wish I knew when I, when I was starting with my finances. The third lesson that I learned is that people can do the worst things for money. Like people will betray you. People will stab you in the back. People will do the worst things 
for money. And this is not to scare you. This is not to tell you that generally people are bad. I believe that generally people are good. However, when it comes to money, when it comes to money, people can actually go the distance. And they'll do whatever it takes for them to get the money, for them to see the money for their own personal gains. So this is just a word of caution for you guys that when you're dealing with people and money, you got to learn how to check these people and only do business with people that you trust. For some people, you can trust someone and they can still backstab you. They can still betray you, right? And so it's a matter of you learning to trust yourself that you're going to be okay, that you're going to be able to get back up in case that thing happened. So if that thing happens, then you know that it's okay because, you know, it's reality. If you keep on wishing that the world is fair, then you're gonna wait for a very long time, my friend, because the world is unfair, but that's life, that's the world. So you either wait for the system to become perfect, which is never gonna happen, but if you accept that the world is unfair right now, you gotta protect yourself. You gotta protect your dreams. This is your life that we're talking about. This is not just your money, but this is potential money that your loved ones can enjoy, that your loved ones can also need. So you gotta, you gotta protect your money because there's a lot of people out there that are willing to do everything, the worst of things for money. So protect your money. That's your money. You work hard for it. So you gotta learn how to protect your money as well. And the fourth lesson that I wanna share with you is connected to the third lesson, which is trust people but verify. I'm not saying that one of my biggest mistakes is I trusted people. Like trust is a bad thing. Trust is not a bad thing. Trust is the currency that we live in this world, that we use in daily transactions. Like how do we get a client? How do we close a client if we can't build trust, right? And I don't even know this person. The person doesn't even know me. If you're a salesperson, if you're a businessman, you know this. There's already trust involved when you're going out of the bar, talking to someone, talking to a stranger, there's trust out there. So trust is the currency that we live in, that we use in this world. So trust is not a bad thing, okay? But trusting people with your money irresponsibly by not checking, by not verifying, by not doing your own research, that's the mistake that I experience. And I hope that you refrain from that as well. You don't just trust people and say, okay, I trust you and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna check after three months, after a year, maybe. No, you gotta check. You gotta verify. Trust, but verify. It's not enough that you trust someone. Trusting someone brings responsibility to you. That it's your responsibility to check. And checking and verifying is not the same as you don't trust them. You know, you trust them, but at the same time, you do your part in making sure that you check what you, because I honestly believe that you receive what you inspect. You get what you inspect. Okay, you don't get what you expect, you get what you inspect. So trust people, but verify. The fifth lesson, and I think a lot of people should know this when you're starting your investments, is that invest money that you're only willing to lose. So if you're investing money, it's money that you are not going to need in the next couple of months, maybe even in the next year, or not at all. All. You're not gonna need that money. It's for probably your retirement fund or your growth fund. While it may hurt if you're gonna lose that, it's not gonna hurt as much if the money that you're gonna invest is, let's say, your money for you know your family or someone's tuition, someone's food on the table. And that's the worst because the thing that happened with me is I invested money that are not just my money. I actually asked my friends, my family, the people that I cared about, the people that I love to invest with me. And so when, when they did that, you know, they put their money that they're going to use for their child's tuition in the future, maybe even for their food. And I bear that. And so one thing that I learned is that if you're going to invest money, you're only going to invest a portion that you're willing to lose. You know, if you're failing to plan, you're planning to fail. I do believe that. But you also got to prepare and plan according to things not going to your plan. Again, you got to plan according to things not going to your plan. Because if you do that, you're going to prepare yourself for the worst. And if you prepare yourself for the worst, you're not going to be blindsided. You're going to be always prepared and you're going to maximize, you know, diversification, making sure that you're smart with your money because not you're not really going all in with something. Which leads me to the next lesson that I learned. Never put all of your eggs in one basket. I mean, Warren Buffett talks about this and I missed that chance because I was too greedy, okay? So what I did is I put all of my savings, all of 
my hard-earned money in that investment, quote-unquote investment. And so when I got scammed, I lost everything and I got depressed. Why? Because I put everything in that investment. It cost me everything. The first year where I was you know, earning a lot of money in the work that I'm doing, content creation, I'm earning a good amount of money, but I lost everything. Everything. My hard-earned money one year lost it. So now I'm making sure that the assets that I have, that the investments that I have are properly diversified. My portfolio is properly invested. I'm not going to make the same mistakes again. I hope that you guys don't do that as well. It doesn't matter if this certain investment will give you huge, huge gains. Are you protecting yourself for when it might fall and, and give you huge losses? Diversify. Never put all of your eggs in one basket. The next lesson that I learned is when you mix your emotions with your finances, you lose. When you mix your emotions with your finances, you lose. You got to be smart with your finances. That's why you use, this is the only time that I'm going to give out this advice. I usually tell people that always trust your heart, trust your gut, trust your intuition. But with your finances, fear can actually be your best friend. Okay. So it's not saying, oh, fuck you fear. I'm not going to listen to you. It's you allowing a certain type of safety from the fear Okay? to protect you from big amount of losses. But if you allow your emotions to meddle with your decision making, then you're always going to be excited for the highs. Okay, And when the lows hit you, it's going to be super low. So calm yourself. Breathe before you make a decision with money. The eighth lesson is that investments are not necessarily risky. I am the risk. Don't get me wrong. All kind of investments have risks. But the thing that makes it riskier is me because I am the risk. And my risk is not doing enough research. Okay, The only thing that makes crypto risky, that makes, I don't know, stock market risky, the companies that you invest in, is if you don't understand them. Every kind of investment, there's risk out there. But if you're not doing your own research, if you're not doing your due diligence, then the risk of you failing will increase. So ask yourself, are you doing your research? Are you equipping yourself with the knowledge and the wisdom that you need to make sure that you build wealth for yourself and for you to reach financial independence? So you want to lessen the risk? Invest in yourself. Invest in yourself by reading a lot of books, by listening to a lot of podcasts, and just doing your own research. It will help, I promise. The ninth lesson is that we all make mistakes and even the successful people make mistakes as well. And that's okay. Every time I look back at that moment, I just think to myself, maybe that's my down payment for success. And yeah, it's a quite big amount of um, down payment. But you know, that's life. But I just, you know, think to myself that if that's a big amount of down payment, probably the ROI is also big. So I'm just waiting universe hear me out but I, I really I, I really I really believe that you know we all fail and that's okay one thing that I learned is that money just solves money problems money or your finances is just one aspect of your life it's not your life you will make mistakes just with relationships just with maybe your family your friends with yourself with your finances and that's okay there's a lot of things out there that are still part of your life and if you have money problems right now it's not the end of the world you can find a way it's a numbers game so if you got that deep quickly you can also get out of it quickly there's that chance so always be hopeful always have that hope that things will get better because it will i promise you it will and for me it took me i don't know a whole year to get myself up to build my self-esteem back up and that's also the reason why i recently became a financial coach or a wealth coach where I help people, I guide people, learn about the basic fundamentals of personal finance and also coach them around their limiting beliefs about money so that they won't repeat the same mistakes that I did. And I'm teaching people that so that when people get to the point, if you know they make the same mistakes that I did, I'll be able to help them. So yeah, it's not the end of the world. It's it's a hurdle, it's an obstacle, but the obstacle is the way, just like what Ryan Holiday said. So yeah, use it to your advantage. And so the last lesson that I want to share with you is that listen to your rich friend's advice. I mean, if you want to emulate someone's success, you got to, of course, ask them. It's not bad to ask for advice. It's not showing that you're weak. It's showing actually that you're smart about your finances because you're getting a second opinion or a third opinion. It's like 
when you're going to a doctor, you know, and when your doctor says this, you still want to go to another doctor to verify, you know, what their claims are, what their findings are, to make sure, you know, that whatever steps you need to take, that's the step that you, you will take. And that's the same with your finances. You can ask people who have already done it, okay? My advice is find a coach that you admire, you know, that is aligned with your vision, with your lifestyle, and of course, aligned with your values. And most importantly, if they have the same result, listen to them. If you want to emulate someone's result, you got to listen to them. Like they're giving out advice. And if you're doing the opposite, then you're going to get the opposite, okay? The only way to be rich is to stop doing what the poor people are doing so you know it's not bad it's not bad to ask for advice ask advice ask for help talk to a coach that's the shortcut <laughs> i'm just contradicting myself here i just said that i that there's no shortcut but really the hack in life if you want to shorten your learning curve you gotta talk to a coach talk to a mentor and follow their advice a lot of people you know they hear a lot of good advice and they don't follow it that sucks <laughs> and so those are the lessons that i learned again i'm gonna go in i'm gonna deep dive into this one and maybe in my next video i'm gonna tell the whole story about this but hopefully you learned a thing or two in this and also in my next next video i'll also be talking about maybe you can see it here or here i don't know but i'll be talking about how you could build your wealth in the starting phase of your life so if you're starting if you want to build your finances there's actually five or five to seven steps that you could start doing right now no matter how much your income is no matter how big or small money is coming into your your pocket or your wallet there's a right way of managing your finances and so that's what we're going to talk about in the next next video so hopefully you guys check it out and yeah would love to know more if you want me to create more content like this i miss you guys i love creating videos like this so thank you thank you thank you my name is alec cuenca thank you so much and just remember that you are love you are enough and you are worthy of all the good things in life just believe that and so spread the loves spread the kindness and i'll see you guys next video peace